Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody give the Lord some praise. Somebody give him some glory. He deserves the honor. He deserves the praise. He deserves the worship. We have had a long day, so just bear with us for now. All right. Um, today we're going to sort out like scripture find the ox treading the corn because the ox treading the corn a long while and we haven't. Um, done the scriptures we just did like a review per se yesterday right all right so open your scripture page what should i look at i look at sleepy <laughs> my eyes circling over my head kind of looking human <laughs> all right here we go um open your open your scripture page Hallelujah, Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Father. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would teach us like you always do, Daddy, that you would take over. Uh, you are the teacher, and we're the students. That's what we are. We are the students. So open your scripture page. All right. Here we go. Have your way, Daddy. Have your way. All right. Let's see here how it goes. Okay, first thing I hear is let the tears grow with the weed. With the wheat. Not the weed, the wheat. Let the weed grow with the wheat. <laughs> the weed is the tears. Now we're looking at Matthew 13. Verse 20 to 30, all right? Matthew 13, verse 24 to 30. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field, or a farmer. But while, the men, but while men slept, Okay, so I hear him saying, stay awake and pray. So we're going into Matthew 26. 13 and 13 is 26. Check this out. Matthew 26 verse, let's say 40, because we're looking at 41 to 43. Adrian, is that you? No. Matthew 26. 40 to 42 then Jesus returned to the disciples and found them sleeping what happened he found them sleeping all right so when they're sleeping what happened in the previous one that we read the thief came and he planted weed among the plants and he said were you not able to keep watch with me for one hour he asked Peter verse 41 Watch and pray. Watch and pray. So you will not enter into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. What is God saying here? He said, listen, keep watching and pray. The hour is getting darker. Okay, as you fall asleep, as it gets darker, guess who's coming? The thief. He, he comes in the night. He comes in the dark. Here's what he says. 
he says watch and pray so you will not enter into temptation now if something comes upon you suddenly I notice when I say suddenly because he said as it was in the days of Noah so it shall be at the coming of the Son of Man okay they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage and then suddenly suddenly the flood came and they were swept away so we're going there and we're gonna look at that just a little bit because they weren't expecting it they had no defense they had nothing prepared they had nothing organized nothing they they, they had no defense all right so as it was in the as it was what am i typing here as it was in the days of noah i hear you papa he says don't muzzle the ox here we go our scripture verse Give me a second. We gotta find something they cannot pick up. So let's find some nice hot music or something. We're hot worship. Here we go. All right, so you know he says, don't muzzle the ox when it's treading the corn. So we're going to use that. We're going to look at that first. First Timothy 5, verse 18. Here we go. First Timothy five eighteen. We're looking at Timothy verse seventeen to nineteen. Always taking the verse in context. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Here's what he says. He says, let the elders that rule be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and the doctrine. Verse 18, for the scripture says, thou shall not muzzle the ox that treads out the corn and the laborer is worthy of his reward all right so father showing us even this thing here where the ox is treading out the corn the ox is eating all the chaff all the you know all the the things that will be burnt and he's leaving the grain right I don't know why they don't eat, eat corn, but chicken eats corn, so maybe the cow is made for, I don't know, don't ask me. Um, but listen, so it's treading, it, it's eating most of the thing that will be burnt. Now, what is the Holy Spirit coming to do? The Holy Spirit is coming to do the exact thing, but just we're not corn, right? So the Holy Spirit, what does He do? He convicts us of sin. That's where you feel the shift of your mind. That thing tugging in your heart saying, no, don't do it. It's wrong. John 16, 8. Now, for those who want to continue in their lifestyle of doing wrong, they hate those who preach 
something that cuts them like a knife because the word of God is what? It is sharper than any two-edged sword, all right? So we're looking at John 16, 8, reading verse 7 to 9, and he says, But I tell you the truth. It is for your benefit that I am going away. So like, why Jesus? Why are you leaving us here alone? What are we going to do? Uh, you know, if we don't have you, then we won't have anybody, then we're not able, right? He said, but I tell you the truth. It is for your benefit that I am going away. Unless I go away, the who? The advocate, the helper. He will not come to you. So when Jesus ascended to heaven, what happened? Remember what he said, go and wait in Jerusalem. And what happened? They went in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came upon them, right? And tongues of fire sat upon them. Who's this weird person sending me a message while I am? You're going to be deleted if you do that. All right. All kinds of nonsense. All right, let's see here. Verse 8. When he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. All right, so when who comes? The Holy Spirit, the helper, the advocate. Remember, he's what? The Holy Comforter. He's the mighty counselor. He's the teacher. He's the advocate. He's the, ah, he's everything. All right, check it out. He's the spirit of God, all right? So here's what he says. Now, the flesh and the spirit are at enmity with each other. Because the flesh hates the spirit of God. The flesh hates God, okay? Anything that God loves, the flesh hates. So, this is where we have the dividing of flesh and spirit. The flesh hates the spirit. The spirit doesn't like the... Uh, oh, sorry, the flesh. <laughs> the spirit does not like the flesh. So here's what he said in verse 9. In regard to sin, because they don't believe in me. He will convict the world. He will what? To convict someone is to make them feel guilty, right? They are guilty as charged. He will convict the world in regard to sin the thing that the world is doing the thing that the world is pressed on doing is sinful and he said he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment so in other words those in the world who are doing things of the world are convicted that listen it's sinful that they're acting not in righteousness and that they will be judged and that's why they they have this hateful kind of way about them that just <laughs> okay anyway <laughs> so we're looking at the word of god is sharp Hebrews 4, Hebrews 12, Hebrews, Hebrews 4, 12, there we go, Hebrews 4, 12, verse 11 to 13, so something happens when the Spirit of God gains control, and that's why God says, don't muzzle the ox, don't stop the ox, from doing what he was called to do he's called to tread out the corn to tread out the corn he's going to eat the stalk corn can't fool a cow but stalk can okay so hebrews eleven thirteen. check this out let us labor therefore to enter into that rest which rest he's talking about the sabbath Least any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Here's what he says in verse 12. For the word of God is quick 
and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's how good it is. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You hear that? So this is what the word of God is doing and this is why you'll find when you speak the truth around people and they just they're hell-bent on doing what they like they'll hide they don't they'll push you away they'll move away they'll they'll throw a kind of a hatred towards you this is why they stoned Stephen this is why they wanted to stone Jesus this is why they crucified the apostles they ah they did all sorts right because they don't want to hear that because the Spirit of God he what? he convicts all right so then we're looking now and it says verse 12 for the word of God is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit now we know that the body and the spirit is a soul all right and we know that the joints and the marrow the bone and the marrow it's the same thing but they have a slight difference so the word of God goes between, so nothing can escape it. Nothing can escape him. All right, check this out. And he says, is a discerner. To discern is to know before it is made known. Do you discern something? He's a discerner of the thoughts that we think and the intents of our heart. Verse 13 neither is there any creature that is not manifest bless you in his sight his eyes are upon all things here's what he says um but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do i hear you papa he says is it a wonder is it in vain that he says the spirit he calls to dwell in us yearns in envy. It is not. James 4, 5. All right. Because the spirit of God already knows. He, he's already seen what's going on in his what? In his temple. Remember the Bible says, don't you know that your body is a living temple of God amen and God God made the temple God does not dwell in a temple made by the hands of men not brick and mortar but he made it himself because we were made in his image and likeness so we're looking at James 4 5 rain stop falling right now in Jesus name Thank you, Lord. <laughs> James, James, God of Elijah, <laughs> close up the heavens that there's no rain. I have to shout. I need to do your work, Daddy. James 4, verse 4 to 6. You're not comfortable? Oh, you want to check? No. Yeah, you can. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're good. <laughs> eh. <laughs> Look, at each. I don't know if you could. Yeah, you could pull it maybe soon. And it, it could go a little more. Yeah. And you could pay for that. Might be comfortable. James 4 5. You adulteresses. You what? You adulteresses, when you're in adultery, you're cheating on your spouse, basically. And God is our spouse. He said, I'm married to you. Do you? Okay, we're going into a few things here. We're looking at the Lord is our maker and husband we're looking at I am married to you Israel 
Now, the Bible says when two becomes one, they're one flesh. They become, well, two come together, they become one, right? A man shall leave his father and his mother and cling to his wife and all that. Now, the bride of Christ is the church. We are the bride of Christ, all right? God desires us to be one with him. What does this mean? Well, it couldn't be sexual, okay? Because we are humans. We are in the flesh and he is spirit. Ooh. How come that come down? Plain crazy. All right. So, I don't know. Try and make yourself comfortable. If you want, I can give you back here. Feels more comfortable here? No, Okay. Or you could recline back the chair if you want. Yeah. It goes back. Oh. Oh. I don't know. It have a, um. It have two levers. Oh. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's not the way. Right. The other one, I think. And? Is the push down or up? I don't know. You forget out? Okay, yeah, that's yeah. it. You, you pull it forward. You gotta push it back. You able? No. Alright, let me try. Come. Let me do it for you. Oh, you got it? Yeah. You gotta pull the chair up and push it back because the, the iron. Alright, try it. Yeah. Right. That might be better. <laughs> all right here you go all right yeah, good. hallelujah all right so we're looking at what are we looking at i'm sorry <laughs> uh, i'm getting away here and i forget <laughs> i won't lie to you um isaiah isaiah um what i'm married to you israel yes. and the lord is our maker and our husband verse four to six do not be afraid the first words do not be afraid right so i was saying when a, a, a husband and a wife come together they become one god wants us to be one with him but it's not sexually because we are in the flesh and he's a spirit all right and even if that's just going to be weird okay so <laughs> god wants us to be reverted or to be recreated in the way that he made adam and eve when he made Adam and Eve, guess what? What was happening? He did not make Adam and Steve. Yeah, he didn't make Adam and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> but God and Adam were synced. That's why God, God told Adam, you name the animals. Because Adam knew exactly what God would call them. Yeah? So here's what he said in Isaiah 54, 4. Do not be afraid, for you will not be put to shame. Do not be humiliated, for you will not be disgraced. For you will not forget, for you will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. So, so the bride is like, hey, my husband dead. So she, she, she just considered God a dead God, you know, and just did what she wanted. And then now God says, when you're willing to come back now, guess what? Guess what? He says, verse 5, For your husband is your maker, and the Lord, the Lord of hosts is his name. And here's what he says, The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He has called, he is called the God of all the earth. Verse 6, For the Lord has called you back, and like a wife deserted and wounded in spirit are you deserted were you like think of a, wo a woman when she's married and, and her husband just leaves her cheats on her and just goes she's broken in the spirit so but it was like the other way around because when she cheated on her husband her husband left her so here's what god says for the lord has called you back come back my wife like a wife deserted and wounded in the spirit 
the wife of one's youth when she is rejected says your God so this is where remember he says sin separates us from God right and that's exactly what it was because if he had continued if he had allowed us to go on wherever we were going in sin without the commandments we would not know what sin is to flee from sin and then if Jesus hadn't come then we would be still in sin because the commandments now convict us of what we are never able to do completely by ourselves see how that works so now we know what sin is by the commandments but now Jesus has come as the Holy Spirit okay I'm talking about well I'm, I'm gonna say it like that because that's how I have the revelation right but Jesus has come and he kneeled our sins to the cross and he is the Holy Spirit in the spirit teaching us to run away from sin fair enough so if we didn't get the commandments we wouldn't know what sin was we would continue in sin and if we didn't have the Holy Spirit after Christ then what we would never be able to stay away from that sin because we are in the flesh and as long as we're in the flesh we will commit sin so I hear him saying we're gonna find that as well who does a lot that I just said I'm not typing nothing <laughs> um, I hear him saying something like yes and while I look for as long as we're in the flesh um, we will sin that's in Romans somewhere right right okay it's a Romans it's in Romans 7 verse 5 let's read that and see what happens I hear him saying Papa you gotta give it to me again I lost it <laughs> oh, I lost it darn it oh I got it again see he gave it okay he who says he has no sin is a liar all right so we're going to look at this right now we're looking at first John 1 8 I feel dust. Oh, it's making me hard to breathe. First John one eight. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus. That's what He says. The blood of Jesus. His son cleanses us from all sin. That's what I just said, right? That's where Jesus came after the commandments. Now, the commandments are holy because they convict us of sin. They tell us that, hey, sin is there. But if we continue in just the commandments, then we'll always see that we have sin. But if we don't look to Jesus to do what the commandment says, then it's going to be impossible but if we look to jesus to do what the commandment says then we're going to be free all right so first john 1 8 i felt up fixed my hair honestly first john 1 8 verse 7 to 9 but if we walk in the light as he's in the light if we walk in holiness if we walk in righteousness if we have that desire to be perfect as god is perfect to be holy as god is holy we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin see the blood of Jesus is the empowerment because Jesus overcame all right and if verse 8 if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us see that 
Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All right. So if who, who, who is going to convict us? The Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit is telling us something's not good or somewhere it's not good to be or somewhere is, you know, it's just not good. Get out or leave it or abandon this or, or something that says move away he'll be saying this is the way walk in it then we're not to tell the holy spirit shut up some people will fight down people to the last to get their say and to stay in the sin and you know what god calls that blaspheming the holy spirit because if the Holy Spirit has come to convict the owl, mosquito bit me on my foot. <laughs> if the Holy Spirit came to convict the world of sin, and you're telling him to shut up, and sin is in you, then guess what? What are you telling God? You're telling God you want to remain in your sin. You don't care. To, to be washed you don't care to be refined you want to be in your sin and the Bible calls the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit what the unpardonable sin no wonder God tells us don't 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 muzzle the ox when it's treading the corn when there's a dividing when the word when the sword comes and he begins to rightly divide because that's what he said the word will do the word of god will convict you listen this is right this is wrong god wants you to do this god doesn't want you to do that and you tell him shut up who are you telling to shut up god himself because it's his spirit you're telling christ to shut up or you're telling god in the spirit to shut up because that is jesus in the spirit he's god okay See, it all matches together. It fits like a puzzle perfectly. Um, so we're going to read Romans 7, 5 now. This is my soul, my Savior, Lord, to Thee. Romans 7, verse 4 to 6. Therefore, my brothers, you also died to the law through the body of Christ. How? Why is he saying that? Why is he saying you also died? You died to the law through the body of Christ because Jesus crucified sin. So if he crucified sin and you've made up your mind to receive Christ then guess what you've been crucified with Christ doesn't the Bible tell us that we're crucified with Christ somewhere we're gonna find it Okay, just a second. Galatians 20, um, Galatians 2, 20. Galatians 2, 20. So we're reading verse 19 to 21. For through the law, I died to the law, so that I might live to God. I, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body I live by the faith of God, 
uh, uh, faith in the Son of God. I live by faith in the Son of God. I live by faith in Jesus who loved me and gave himself up for me. Therefore, if someone loves you and gave themselves up for you, you will not want to do something that caused them to die for you. Right? That's why we, we don't, that's why he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. When he says, keep my commandments, it's as if he was saying, desire to be holy, desire to walk with God, desire to be with him in all things, desire to, to please God. All right, in verse 21, he says, I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness came through the law, then Christ died for nothing. So if we could gain righteousness through the law, then Christ died for nothing, right? Because he would need to die. But we could not obtain righteousness by the things that we do. We had to obtain righteousness by the things that he has done. So when he did it, he put away all strongholds away from us. All, everything that would prevent us from following God because we were just in the flesh but now we have the Spirit of God so when he's done it and we receive him and we're blessed with the promise of his spirit you're not comfortable <laughs> uh oh <laughs> oh your foot's so under mm -hmm. wow what are we gonna do about that now <laughs> you're here today no, it's just the washing machine. Like right here? Uh -huh. <laughs> Your ankles are gone. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. What was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, they're inter interrupting my, my... I don't like that. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't give them permission to do that at all. Alright, here we go. So, if... He just reminded me. See? One go. Here Sorry. Okay. So he says, what did he say? He said, right. He said that if if righteousness came by the law, then Christ died for nothing. He didn't have to die, right? But righteousness doesn't come by the law. Because if righteousness came by the law, guess what? We would be saved by the good things that we do. That means Muslim, Hindu, Norarian, Buddhist, everybody would be saved because they're doing good. But Christ had to die for us because only Him is able to do things perfectly. Every thought, every word, every deed. Yeah? So we're looking at, let's read it again. Verse 19 of Galatians 2. For through the law I died. So that, the, so that I die to the law, so that I might live to God. Verse 20. I have, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. That old person, that old me, I've decided that I will no longer be following that person. That person is dead to me. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. So whatever life I have to live now, I'm living to his glory because he's first, he first loved me, all right? And then it says in verse 21, I do not set aside, I do not set aside grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then guess what? Christ died for nothing. So if we could have gained heaven by doing things, by just like the law says, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, then it would be enough and Jesus didn't have to come, but he had to come, right? Because it was impossible for us to do anything that the law says perfectly. 
unless with this spirit. All right. You gonna pee? Hmm? You gonna pee? No. Oh. <laughs> First, okay, so we're looking at. We looked at Isaiah, right? Isaiah 54, verse 5. The Lord is your Mika and your husband. Okay, now we're looking at a mighty. <laughs> It's the same thing where God says, I'm married to you, all right? He says, in Jeremiah 3, verse 14, and this is exactly what God is doing. He said, listen, he wants us to be separated from sin. That's why Christ came, all right? That's why he came here for us. He wants us back with him. Now, in Jeremiah 3, 14, here's what he says. Jeremiah 3 14 13 to 15 only acknowledge your guilt that you have rebelled against the Lord your God that's all you need to do all you need to do is say Lord I'm a sinner and I know I've done wrong and I want to turn back and do what's right and he comes and he helps so Jeremiah 3 14 13 to 15 and he says only acknowledge your guilt that you have rebelled against the Lord your God you have scattered your favors to foreign gods under every green tree and have not obeyed my voice So when God blessed us, and well, when he blessed the children of Israel and he brought them out of the land of Egypt, he took them out from bondage. And then what did he want to do? They went and he served idols. He said, you've taken your favors and scattered them to foreign gods under every green tree. Whatever he blessed them with, they were worshiping false gods with. So here's what he says. I have not obeyed my voice. Verse 14. Return, O faithless children, declares the Lord, for I am your master, and I will take you one from a city and two from a family. Why is he pointing to that? Why is he saying one from a city and two from a family? Because in Sodom, he's pointing to the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Because in Sodom, when, when he said he was going to destroy Sodom, guess what? Guess what? They laughed at him. The son-in-law said he was joking. His wife and his daughters ended up coming out. And how many were there? There were three. Because his wife turned around. So he's pointing us to Sodom and Gomorrah. Check this out. And here's what he says. He says, for I, okay, yeah, he says, for I am your master, and I will take you, one from a city, and two from a family, and bring you to Zion. So that's how many are going. Remember, eight it was that was saved through water. Why? Because eight believed God. And they condemned the world by sin and they inherited the righteousness that comes by faith. They became an heir to righteousness. Verse 15 tells us that then I will give you shepherds after my own heart. What does this mean? I'll give you shepherds after my own heart. They're thirsty for the word. They want the truth. They want to see the glory of God. And they want to see no man perishing. Because that's what's in God's heart. He, he, so that's the very next thing that we're looking at. Because he said, I desire 
no man to perish but all to come unto repentance For the Lord desires no man to perish, but all to come unto repentance. That is God's solemn wish, because He made all souls, and all souls He wants in heaven with Him. Remember that precious one? She's precious. <laughs> he wants her in heaven with Him. And she has an anointing on her. She has an anointing on her, and that's why Satan's attacking her. Now, God says, listen, if you desire, if you desire to do good for him, for his kingdom, you desire to see souls saved, you desire to speak the truth, you desire to see his, what is that? His glory lifted up. He says, I will give you shepherds after my own heart. Second Peter 3, 9. You can't bend down and sleep. You know that, right? <laughs> Don't even think of that. I was thinking about You was that. looking so angelic. <laughs> You're not comfortable. No, I didn't. You want to come here? No. And put your foot that way down? Mm -mm. You sure? It's warm to it. You're mm. pasty. Here. How you want to go down and say some water? Mm -hmm. Alright. 2 Peter 3 9. Beloved, do not, verse 8 to 10. Do not, don't let this one thing escape your notice. With the Lord, a thousand years, a day is like a thousand years. So one day for us is like a thousand years with the Lord. A one day of Him. It's like a thousand years for us. We can never understand his timing. <laughs> and that's what he says. He says, and a thousand years are like a day. Verse 9, the Lord is not slow. Sleep woman. You're supposed to be sleeping. You have 40 minutes Four. to sleep. I'm not going to sleep. Yes, go and sleep. So 40, five. no, give 50. I'll say 50 minutes. Go ahead. You can catch that. Okay. So verse 9. And the Lord is not... Okay. And the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise. As some understand slow. Some might say, Ha, what should God do, sir? He ain't doing nothing. <laughs> but little do you know, God is on your side and he's working things out for your best interest. Just be patient with him and trust him all the way. Here's what he says. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some understand slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting anyone to what? To perish. So that's why he said in John 3, 16, what did he say? For God so loved the world. Why would you be so... <laughs> For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, <laughs> that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God don't want anybody to perish. He gave Jesus. He gave Jesus for everyone. He came for everyone. All right. Now check this out. Verse ten. But the day of the Lord, just like the days of Noah will come like a thief and the heavens will be dissolved the heavens will di disappear with a roar and the elements will be dissolved in the fire and the earth and its works will not be found you hear what he says the earth and its works will not be found with a book, book? Mm -hmm. have you commanded your your day 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I do. Like, come on, my morning. That's what I was telling you this morning. Mm -hmm. Here's what he says. He says, the elements will be dissolved in fire. That The clouds go in, the heavens go in, the sky go in, fire go in, earth go in, wind go in, everything go in. You really? want a book to read? Which one? <laughs> Which one? I don't know anyone. Break free from people pleasing? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm read this. Alright. You went for an hour, Bert? Hmm? Not lost. Mm-mm. I knocked it too much. <laughs> Okay, so here's, it is not me, right? I don't knock the glass, I got glasses not me. Okay, here's what he says. In 2 Peter 3, verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be dissolved in the fire. And the earth and its works will not be found. So do you think God wants this to suddenly come upon us like it did in the days of the flood? Of course not. He's a loving Father. He's a merciful Father. So that's why he said when the Holy Spirit is doing its job, when He is come to do His job, when He is speaking to you through the Spirit, don't quench the fire. Do not out down what the Spirit is trying to say. Open and go out of my side right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. There we go. I have pain in my side, like if I slept bad. Deshaun, open for me just now. Oh, but the pain gone. <laughs> if the pain, if it's if it's there after, I'm gonna make up with me. First Thessalonians 5:19, because that same power is inside of her. Verse 18 to 20. Give thanks in every circumstance, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Okay, so it mightn't seem ideal. But it's what he purposed and he planned for each one of us so that the refining will come. We might not get anything out of it, but we're leaving with a whole bunch. What are we leaving with? We're leaving with experience. We're leaving with wisdom. We're leaving with a lesson learned. Come on. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 Give thanks in every circumstance, for this is God's will for you in Christ. And he says, in Christ Jesus, sorry, verse 19, do not quench the spirit. Do not extinguish the spirit. You know when a fire is burning and you want to just, you know, the spray and out you down, God says, don't do it. When you feel him begin to convict, begin to burn inside, he said, but this thing doesn't sit well with me. Something's not right. I, I'm, being, I'm feeling something different as I'm receiving a word in that I'm not supposed to be here, that I'm not supposed to be there, I'm not supposed to be with this person, I'm not supposed to be in this thing, I'm not supposed to be, you know, speaking this way or, or doing this thing. He will convict us of all things when he comes. Listen, he will teach us all things and he will convict the world of sin. So everything that is unholy to God, the Spirit of God begins to convict us that it's wrong to run from it. And then he says, Verse 20, do not treat prophecies with contempt. Hey, you know, you're prophesying this bad thing, you know, why, why only death and gloom, death and gloom? Because it's coming. God wants to give you a warning that, listen up, um, in just a second here, eh? it's too hot, it's really too hot for all this here down. <laughs> so God, <sighs> God wants us to, he wants us to what? 
He wants us to be aware of the danger. He doesn't want the danger to just come. Like as it was in the days of Noah. Forget this, right? See, seriously. God wants us to, to be aware that a day is coming where everything that we know, life as we know it, will be burnt out. So the thing that you're fighting for now, even if it is to have a man or woman beside you, to have your own house, a car, a job, clothes, food, whatever. Some people are gluttons. They, they will eat and eat and they'll go and they'll eat and eat and they will empty the fridge and they'll eat and eat and eat and more eat. They live to eat. <laughs> <laughs> some people are like that. And some people are like, they, they, they love things. Gimme, 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 gimme. Materials. They're working. They're working to get things. Yeah, materialistic. And, and where, where are those things going to go on the day of the Lord? In smoke. <laughs> it's going up in smoke, right? So what sense is it? So God doesn't want us to be trapped by things. So he like wants us... To live in any moment. Yes. <laughs> he wants us... To be aware that the day of the Lord is coming and suddenly, and for them who's sleeping, they're gonna be barbecue. Hmm. And for those That's who are, the for, the, for those who are awake, they know, they've prepared, so they're not attached to these things. So when God says, "Hey, run, get out of the city, because I'm going to bring fire and brimstone upon Sodom and Gomorrah," we don't go back and go but my lovely house and my shopping mall and my you know mm -hmm. you don't look back like lot's wife and mm -hmm. she turned to salt that's the end of she all you could do is season a pot with her or eat her french fries <laughs> you know it's it's it is what it is so when god gives <laughs> prophecies and he says listen Doom and gloom come in. You're hearing earthquake come in. You're hearing shaking come in. You're hearing a disaster here, a disaster there. Don't say, well, why is she always talking about doom and gloom? Oh, gosh, man. Tell me something like peaceful or happy, you know. God says, don't treat prophecies with contempt. Because it will be a warning telling you to prepare. Because let's say this whole place could shake. And guess what? The ground you're standing on might be the only ground that stands firm. Everywhere could fall around you. But the place where you are stands firm. Why? Because you dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. Wherever you are, He is. And wherever He is, you are. Amen? So God tells us, don't quench the fire of the Holy Spirit because He is straightening you up to what to align to his word the Bible says prepare the way for the Lord and make his path crooked that's what the word says right prepare the way for the Lord and bend up it bend up the path every how do what you want the Bible says make it straight prepare the way for the Lord and make his path straight he wants straight paths so here's what he says where are we <laughs> we are in all right we were just reading about jeremiah right where he says return we're going to read jeremiah 3 verse verse 14 to 15 now return O faithless children so you didn't have faith to stand there so god says hey come back it's okay i love you and i will graft you in here's what he says declares the lord for i'm your master i will take you to one from a city and two from a family remember when jesus said do not suppose i came to bring peace but a sword of division the truth from the lie sheep from goat darkness from light he said, I come to bring father against son, mother from daughter, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Back and now, right? But Jesus said, hey, he said it. I didn't say it. He's Let's see where he said it. <laughs> Do not suppose. 
and that I came to bring peace. Bless you. Matthew 10, 34. Matthew 10, 34. Verse 33, 35, and it says, But whoever denies me before men, when you're called to be a witness of God, you better see his word says, and whether you like it or I like it, it is what it is. He says, Whoever denies me before men, I will deny him before my Father in heaven. So when you got baptized, what did you do? You made a public statement. You're not ashamed. And he took no he took record of that. Your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And it says in verse 34, Do not assume that I have come to bring peace on the earth. Will you just say that? <laughs> Hear what he said in Matthew 10. Do not assume, 1034, that I came to bring peace to the earth. I've not come to bring peace but a sword, but... Jesus came to bring sword, but what kind of sword? The Bible says that the word of the Lord is sharper than any double-edged sword. Yeah? So that's what he's talking about. Push come to shove, we go by the pipe and drink. Mm -hmm. Here's what he says. He says, I've come to bring a sword to cut. I want to cut. I want to divide truth and lie. I want to tell you what is good for you and what is bad for you. That he was wants, some people like to hear. Yeah. They get vexed. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what the Holy Spirit convicts and they don't want it. So the person who's speaking the truth. Somebody that doesn't listen to the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now that is being wasting the word already. Mm-hmm. Verse 35. For I have come to turn a man against his father. And a daughter against her mother. A daughter in law against her mother in law. People don't think when you say it like that, you say something bad. Mm -hmm. But it's not all time. It is written. Matthew 10 35. That is it. It is written. <laughs> and God says, listen, because you could be born in a home that is Hindu or Muslim or Norwegian or Buddhism, and God calls you out. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're walking in, he calls you out. And he says, follow me, my child. And he says, yes, Lord, because you hear his voice call him. And you drop what you're doing, and you go after Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now your mother-in-law might be like that. Mm -hmm. Or your father-in-law, or your brother, or your sister, or your mother. That's why he tells us, what does he say? The enemies of our, the, our own, the members of our own household will be our enemies. That's true. I see that for myself. Mm -hmm. Me too. I'm not telling you to go and cuss up your mother-in-law, your <laughs> father-in-law, or your brother, or your sister, you know, I, I never said that. The Bible says, be ready to give an explanation with love and gentleness and peace. He says to get ready to tell them why you believe what you believe and say, listen, my testimony is this. When I was forsaken, Christ was there for me every step of the way. See that? In Matthew 10, 36, he's lining up scripture. Check what he says. That's not where to open the page. So we're reading verse 35 to 37 now. He says, For I have come to turn a man against his father and a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of of his own household you heard that mm -hmm. verse 37 anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me sometimes we say you know i love mommy and daddy so much that i'm going to be hindu or i'm going to be christian i'm, I'm going to be no christian i'm going to be muslim 
I'm not going to receive the blood of Christ that was shed for me. I'm going to be an atheist. You know, my parents don't have this religious spirit, so I don't need this religious spirit. And that's why they're quick to call the conviction of the Holy Spirit, religious spirit. They hate it. All right, verse 37. Matthew 10, verse 37. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Even as he says, when you are called, you have to drop what you're doing and go after the Lord. However you start to do it, you start to do it. Or you say, hey, Jesus loves you. He died for you. He rose again. And he's coming back soon. That touches the heart of people to know that there is someone there who loves them. When they begin to, wait, who did she say? Jesus? And all of a sudden they remember the Christmas story. And all of a sudden they remember the cross. Some people don't even know Jesus died for them. You know that? Sad, but it is what it is. That's why the Bible tells us to go out there and tell them about him. Go and preach it to every creature that you could find. All right. So 1 Timothy 5, verse, you see you gotta take ice cream, or some ice cream. <laughs> 1 Timothy 5, 17 to 19. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Do as they say, but not as they do. Remember when Jesus said that? Remember when he said there are some people who speak it, but they don't do it? Mm-mm-mm. He says, especially they who labor in the word and the doctrine. Verse 18, for scripture says, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. And the laborer is worthy of his reward. Matthew 23, 3. So this is how the Holy Spirit begins to work and, and just, you know, He convicts you to do things, to say things, to be in places. Listen, Matthew 23, 2 to 4 to 4. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. You heard that? the scribes and the pharisees they sit in moses seat so they know the law you know but they're not keeping the law so practice and observe everything they tell you but do not do what they do for they do not practice what they preach verse 4 they tie up heavy burdensome loads and lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves are not willing to lift up a finger to move them all right now we were going into where are we here now with this right so just as it was in the days of noah everybody doing everything business as usual matthew 24 Verse 37 to 39 or 40. The saxophone relaxing, huh? Mm -hmm. It relaxing. Mm -hmm. I don't think they'll cut me off for that one. No, me, they cut me off for music. They like to do that. But of that day or hour, no man knows, nobody knows. Only the Father himself, when he decides that day is. But he will not work contrasting to his word. So we know that there's a timeline there for things to end. So he says in verse 36 of Matthew 24, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father 
only. Verse 37. For but as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of Jesus or the Son of Man be. Verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, no doubt, no destruction. Ah, oh, this crazy boatman preacher, preacher, preaching this thing for like 120 years and no rain to come. We haven't even gotten a drizzle. All right, God says, continue. There will be mockers and scoffers that will continually come. They'll mock you. Verse 38. For as the days, as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. God came, he provided, the righteous went in and believed God. And hello, now action about to start, right? Here's what he says. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Now that's the same thing where God says he desires no one to perish but all to come unto repentance. Now here's what he says. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Surprise! One day you look up and you see the sky, the light from the east to the west, like a lightning bolt. And it says, then two shall be in the field. Two, not one. One shall be taken, the other left. Then two shall be at the mill. Two women shall be at the mill grinding. One shall be taken and the other left. Verse 42, he says, watch therefore. For ye know not what hour your Lord comes. And he says, But notice, if the good man of the house had known which watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. He would have known, well, the thief come in, and he would keep out, keep look for him, keep out the look for him, you know. But God says, We don't even know when he's coming. We don't know when Jesus is coming. So we have to keep our eyes on lookout right we have to keep our spirit man encouraged filled up with the word allow the holy spirit to fill us up to strengthen us you're looking tired <laughs> why are you not sleeping Women. take a nap try try close your eyes right there you have 30 minutes 30 minutes mm -hmm. i'll even turn past so he says, he would have kept watch and not suffer his house to be broken into. Come on, take a nap. And he says, watch. What he says? Watch. He told the disciples to keep watch. Pray that you won't enter into temptation. Keep watch. So we're going into Matthew 26, 41. Verse 40 to 42, then Jesus returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. Were you not able to keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Verse 41, watch and pray so that you will not enter into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Verse 42, a second time he went away and prayed, Father, if this cup cannot be passed unless I drink it, then I'll have to drink it, right? May your will be done. All right, so God tells us in the hour that we have to say the same prayer. It's not your will to take it away from me, then your will be done. You have enough strength inside to go through it. And to come out a conqueror for me to live as christ and die as gain he says father if this cup cannot be passed unless i drink it your will be done now when he tells us don't muzzle the ox don't quiet the holy spirit when he's convicting you of sin when he's calling you out 
and people who could say you know we covered by grace we're under grace not the law yeah we are we're under grace but we're under <laughs> weird we're under we're on sorry <laughs> we're under grace to, to keep the law we are not it's not us ourselves but Christ within us that quickens us we have to know that at all times all right we are under grace to be holy in God we are under grace to be with God again and he says no unclean thing is going to enter into heaven so do not think that you can um, take the blood of Jesus and trample upon it God says no he says you must allow me to do my work allow me to be uh, not me allow me to be inside of you allow me to come and do the work inside allow me to burn out everything that is flesh amen and greater is he inside than he who is outside we don't wrestle against flesh we wrestle against spirit all right and flesh kind of fight spirit spirit must fight spirit amen all right so when God says don't muzzle the ox, it's like him saying, I love you so much. Please don't tell me to be quiet when I'm trying to tell you the right thing. Please don't tell me to be quiet when I'm showing you the way. Please don't tell me to be quiet when I want you in heaven with me and I want to lead you on the right path. God is saying, don't, don't quiet me down. Don't silence me. It's for your own good. Amen? All right, I hope this was... Uh, I hope this was encouraging to you. I hope it was a word that strengthened your spirit. Um, Father is worthy of all praise and honor and glory. So I leave you with this message um, in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, our Father, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. So Father, we just thank you for this word that we pray will be hidden in our hearts that we will not sin against you. Help us to listen to your Holy Spirit. Help us to be warned. When you're giving us warnings, help us to be led. When you're leading us, help us to allow you to comfort us, allow you to be within us. Help us to allow you to keep your temple strong um, and clean and healthy. Help us to love on you, Daddy, in the ways that we were made to, to be a witness of your power and that your spirit resides in us, that we are your children, Father, being led by your spirit. I leave you this message in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Brother Gordy, and Joyce Lynn, and Jacobus, and Theodore, and Kent, and Maurice, and everybody else who would come. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen.